and Yuri and that wonderful documentary that you saw uh, from Pat Murphy and his wife Olivia on their round the world travels in their beautiful yacht uh, Vanuatu with the place in question there made made a big impact on them and they dearly loved that whole experience Delighted to welcome you, Jason McGee. How are you, sir? Good morning. From Black you? Rock in County Louth. Sunny Black Rock in County Louth, Sunny. yeah. It's a lovely part of the world, but uh, it's an ideal place for your, for your class of business, where you're, you're encouraging people in the direction of uh, e-commerce, buying and selling on, on the internet. Is that right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So um, what I'm doing is I'm helping businesses uh, who wouldn't have ordinarily got set up online to sell, Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm trying to look at people who might have an idea to sell something from home. Yeah. So uh, there's lots of people in the current climate who are moving job, changing job, being made uh, unemployed or whatever, who have good ideas and they might want to sell them online. Um, I'm trying to help them to do that. You see, I, I think I can understand a wee bit of this because a year ago, Facebook was foreign to me. Never knew it. A, less than a year down the line, mm -hmm. I have now got... 2,000 uh, friends. Yep. I never thought I'd have so many friends in my life. <laughs> but these are all potential customers. They are. Uh, that, that end of things is uh, sales via social networking. So yeah. the reason that businesses are so interested in social networking is it's free. Yes, of course. So to build up that level of advertisement, you make connections, you add friends, you get followers. And then if you've got goods or services, you can just uh, yeah. publicize it very easily. But I suppose the thing is, sitting, sitting in your... your your garret, your beautiful garret in Bally, in Black Rock, overlooking the Strand, with the tide coming in from the Isle of Man, all you that distance very nicely, away. Yeah. And there you are, and you're doing, yeah, yeah, that's another, that's a thousand, okay. <laughs> that's seven thousand, very good, thank you, keep it coming. But I mean, I, I know I exaggerate, but nevertheless, that's the philosophy that you're making contact with the entire world. Well, it's th that's absolutely uh, the model that you can produce when you're selling online. Your customers don't really care where you're selling the product from, as long as you follow the number one rule, deliver the goods. Deliver the goods. So when the customer buys the product, I know we all buy from major websites, we don't actually know where the product arrives from. What we do want to get is an assurance that what we bought arrives at the door and it arrives in a timely fashion and that we paid the price agreed. Yeah. So whether you do that from a major warehouse on the side of a motorway, or whether you do it from a garage yeah. in, at your home in Blackrock, yeah. The customer doesn't care. I suppose the thing you didn't say there that the customer also wants is that it, it does what it's supposed to do. That well, it's of merchantable quality. You, well, you'll find out very quickly that uh, if you deliver the goods to a customer and they don't get what they want, it's the old adage, they'll tend to tell, tell people of a bad experience, you know, yeah. uh, rather than a good experience. So it is very important that uh, when you deliver the goods, they are exactly what the customer asked for. Absolutely. And the, 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 what, broad terms, what kind of things have you experienced people wanting to sell and selling online? Well, the, the, the normal kind of run of the day uh, products will be your handbags or your shoes. There's, yeah. uh, there's a large uh, population of women out there uh, that have, you know, a, a bedroom full of uh, clothing and shoes that people want to buy. Yeah. So uh, all of the, that material is valuable. Somebody yes. will always want to buy what you ha have. So uh, there's nothing to say that you can't set up a simple website, add in that product range, sell them as they are, as used goods, yeah. uh, for a, a reasonable price, and that you can sell the whole lot of mm -hmm. them online. Mm -hmm. it, it, we're, we're increasingly moving in this direction. Maybe we're already there, but I mean, I just look at the Tesco's of this world and the shopping malls of this world. They're, they're now uh, telling you to come online and they will deliver to you. That's yeah, in that, the same vein. That's a new movement. That's, uh, that's a trend called click and collect. Yes, yes. And it's geared at, at the kind of uh, busier mother or father who hasn't time uh, like they used to have to wander around the shops and pick up yeah. the goods. What they want to be able to do now is uh, order the products and as they're whizzing into town, collecting the kids or whatever it might be, it'll be there. Nearly like a drive through mm. pick up the goods, put them straight into the, yeah. the car, uh, pay online, via a uh, credit card in advance or via PayPal and then whiz back out the door to wherever they're going. Goodness That's gracious. And you're, you, does, does your location in any sense disadvantage you? Or do you benefit from being in Black Rock because people think of the sophistication of Black Rock Dublin and well, the, the private clinics and all of that? 
No, it, it, my company has been on the go uh, for about 10 years, Jazzcom. Wow. So, um, what is the company called? Jazzcom Limited. Jazzcom, that's, yeah. J that's not JZ, it's JAS. JAS, Jason Computers, Jazzcom. Ah, yeah, Jazzcom. Uh, so it's uh, people, people I, I think I'm positioned quite well be halfway between Dublin and Belfast because I have a collection of customers yeah. all around this, this region. You see, that's what got us city status in your age, we, uh, because I was part and parcel of that. We got city status because we reached north and we reached south, mm. and we were there in the economic corridor. That's still relevant today, is it? It's absolutely relevant, and what I see more and more in, in some of the groups that I'm involved in is that the border is now blended. It's that business is both sides of the border, and the border ce ceases to, you know, to have less and less of a commercial importance, so that business mm. is everywhere. And when you're online, people just want to buy the product. Uh, where they can get it. The, mm. the geography isn't as important anymore. I'm beginning to sense from what you're saying that something that I kind of half knew about in my mind's eye three years ago, that it's now rampant and there and working and succeeding. It's all, it's all flowing. Yeah, uh, uh, online sales um, is absolutely the way to go. I would have uh, traditional businesses. I'll give you an example of one. A guy who is uh, started off selling curry sauce from a, a chip van, Singly Curry Sauce. Goodness gracious. They started with one unit, they've expanded to more vans. Now, this year, what they've done is they've gone online and have expanded their product range that, they can, that you can buy online. Not alone can you buy the sauces, you can buy a slimming sauce wow. and you can also buy a gluten-free sauce. My goodness. And there's a huge market for celiac yeah. intolerant foods now and you can buy that from uh, his website, singly.ie. My goodness. And in, in the Republic of Ireland, uh, the, you've had the squeeze, you've felt... Absolutely. Has the squeeze meant that you've thought, I must be innovative, I must be creative in order to find the way forward? I, I would absolutely agree because what people have found is that they're reassessing the model of the business. They're wondering, do I have to have a large shop to be able to sell the goods that I have? Mm. Or could I do some of this from a garage or a lockup or a shared mm. premises? Mm. Again, my product is the key. How I actually sell it or where I sell it from is less relevant. So if I have a good customer base yeah. and I want to tap into a further customer base, and when you think of Google, it has millions, billions of, yeah. of potential customers. That could be your shop window instead of your traditional high yeah. street shop window. See, we have it. We have it over here. There's a wonderful shop over here, McParlins. They're the the traditional uh, independent store, hardware store yeah. that are fast disappearing off the high street. But he's maintaining his presence on the high street. But he's got the back room operation up top side and the yeah. uh, in the attic, so to speak. Mm. And he's selling all across the world. Well, that's a, that's a prime example because he's got a quality product and he wants to just introduce it to more people who won't walk past the shop, who won't be in Nuri. Yeah. Why not buy it in Brazil? Why not buy it in Spain? Um, if he has a website, he can absolutely do that. Yeah, yeah. You're finding now, uh, you, you mentioned the websites and you mentioned you being in business. Where did it all start for you? Oh, it started many moons ago. I actually were you a nerd i i do you know what i i think i was a subconscious nerd i always <laughs> i liked uh yeah. it uh based subjects like movies i remember being totally infatuated with star wars and and things like that when i was a kid but i went down the line of journalism yes and uh unfortunately didn't get the points to make the journalistic route and found myself somewhat at sea and drifted yeah. into an it course and found that suited me uh, very well. I think the journalism end has stood to me because a lot of the sideline ventures that I've done um, needed that kind of a little bit of a journalistic. Yeah, but you're bent. also a communicator. Well, and this is standing to you. Yeah, that's standing to me as, uh, from as well. From your journalism. And I think one other thing that stood to me is I think I can, I can put myself in the customer's shoes very easily. Yes. I have that ability that some technical people don't have. They can make a great technical mm. product, but they've they fail to empathize with what the customer wants. Yeah, I think I have yeah. a foot in both camps and it's standing to me Absolutely. very well. You mentioned Google. I mean, how with the billions of, of, of uh, supporters through that and possible customers through that, is there a technique in making you one of Google's favorites? Well, th there is. There are two techniques. Wow. Uh, one technique is to build a great website and to yeah. have it well designed with keywords in it that Google will rank will very recognize. well. The other way, like everything in life, is to pay for it. Yes, and jump course. the queue. Yeah. So there, uh, Google has a paid model where you can uh, put put the ads up on the top of the right hand side of the 
page or the other model is where you have a good website. But the thing, uh, the interesting point about Google is, is that for years they were the only player in town where you could spend your money. Mm. Now you can run paid ad on Facebook, you can run them on Twitter, yeah. you can run them on YouTube. Yes. So that the, uh, the, the spread of the advertising revenue now is getting broader. Right, yeah. So some of that money now has shifted away from Google yeah. into Facebook because you can get a more targeted audience. Yeah. Because what we're, what we're doing here now, for example, we are community based and if there's a charity out there mm -hmm. who needs our help, we will be there for them yeah. to kingdom come. But at the same time, we're now accepting adverts and we're now working with people and uh, they can be associated with our product and with our show and uh, we have, uh, that's an ongoing thing and a growing thing at the moment. Well, Google, uh, Facebook made some changes just this week uh, mm. on the orientation of the page. They're quite mm. subtle and they've made their pictures slightly larger. They've made the white space on the right where the ads show slightly larger as well. I think that's a forerunner to the advertising modules coming yeah. a bit more to the, f to the and front. And there's a psychology applied to all of this. There is. It's, they're very small changes, but um, it's a kind of, they're teeing themselves up so when they fully load the advertising uh, stream, it'll come through and it'll be more obvious. Yeah. What, what percentage of what you do is led by America? Or have we now moved away from America, or are we into India? Um, I would say that America is still at the forefront of those type of innovation products. Second to this, but Europe is, is hot on their heels. The reason being is the traditional model for innovation in America was centered in Silicon Valley. Of course. And has been. Yeah. Mm. That model is changing. I'm reading mm. a lot about a concept called uh, innovation districts. Yeah. And what they're about is about cities like Newry putting innovation back into the heartland of the city yeah. instead of putting it on a motorway. Yes. Studies have shown that if you put a lot of technical boffins together in an industrial estate on a motorway, creativity doesn't thrive as much no, it's, as it's, when they yeah. interact with people who own shops, yeah. people who drive buses, people who are serving them the coffee. Yeah. The move is on back into that model yeah. already. You see, what you, the, the first thing you talked about there, the, the, uh, the motorway stuff and the, 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 the kind of business parks, it, it's a kind of sterile environment. It is. So if you know the product that you want to make, that's fine. And yeah. that might work very well, perhaps in a medical industry, where you have a specific product that you want to gain. If you want to foster innovation, you need connectivity with different groups of people, and that's a whole cultural mix. And you will reap the rewards from that. There is a definite move to uh, this digital, uh, sorry, innovation districts uh, moving in the U.S. I think over this side of the world, we're already there. Yeah. We're, we we have it as an, a natural kind of yeah. component to our culture. Jason, are you tempted to do a bit of the selling yourself as well as being a consultant? I, I probably s sell, you know, as, as part of my pitch in. Uh, every customer that comes to me um, looking for a product, I have to convince them that they need what I have for sale. So um, mm -hmm. I, I like to think that everything I sell is a, is a valuable asset to the business. I don't think I could sell it to them otherwise. Yes. And I often show evidence in showcases for what I do. So part of the the course that we're going to run um, on Thursday night has an offering of yeah. successful case studies where people have started off with nothing and are now fully selling online. Now, where, where will the course occur? It's going to happen in the hub in, in Newry. The hub, so, down yeah. with, with Patrick yes. and... Uh, down the street, yeah, down Suzanne. The, Suzanne, yeah. lovely people. Yes, very, an absolutely <coughs> beautiful location. Yeah. Um, that type of a model for a shared office environment is very productive. Um, you can go in and just rent a desk for a, a week, a month, whatever yes, it might be. Yes. Uh, that's the way forward in my view. And that's happening on Thursday night? Thursday night, 7 p.m. And is there a, a pre-booking required? Yeah, there's a pre-booking. Um, it's on the Hub's website or it's on jazzcom.ie. You can go in and book a tenner. Tickets are only £10. Yes. And for that, you'll get a two and a half hour session wow. with myself. Yeah. And but it, how can you make a profit out of that? Well, you're not going to. I, my, tenor? My view is that uh, the tenor will probably cover the costs and that everybody in that room is a prospective client for me. Yes, of course. So I can bring of course, them forward. Of course. Um, so if there are ideas, part of what we do actually on the night is a bit of a dragon's den uh, scenario where we offer people uh, to take a couple of minutes and come up with an idea for a, a viable business. Mm. And myself and the other PayPal contact 
will critique it yes. uh, with, yeah. with some fun and there's a small prize. Yeah. So we can give them the benefit of what works well on PayPal and what works well on the website side of things and maybe to spark an idea in somebody's head to actually go forward okay. and with that idea. So people, you, you can get, the, it's the Hub website. Yeah. I suppose if they just go in the Hub, the Nuri, hub Nuri, yeah. that will get you. They'll and get then Jazzcom, that's J-A-Z, <laughs> you know, J-A-S, not J-A-Z, J-A-S. Uh, come, uh, that's your, that's yeah, Jason's that website, I, and it's Thursday night. Thursday night, 7 p.m. to 9.30, uh, we'll have a bit of fun, it's quite laid back, it's aimed at beginners, and I'll bring people through uh, everything they need from start to finish to selling online. Sounds good to me. Go well. Okay, thank God you very you. much. Take care. All the very, very best to you. Music maestro, please.